Hello. This is Andrine, Jewish American priestess. And I'm coming to you on this time right before Passover, right before Pesach. So we're preparing for the holiday. And I'm bringing you a Hebrew reading today. And the question that is up for me and for us right now as we head into this time of Passover and the liberation from Mitzrayim, the narrow places, is what are we enslaved by right now? And what do we need to do to free ourselves? So we're going to do our reading on that theme today, and I'm going to start us out by pulling three cards from this um, soul soul cards two deck. So let's start by shuffling these up, and we're going to get three cards out that will help guide us into our reading. And I'll put the timestamps down below, and then you can choose your reading and go directly there. Let's see what comes out today. There's number one. There is number two. And there is number three. Okay, let's take a look and see what wants to speak today about freedom. For card number one, we have this beautiful painting. For card number two, we have this contemplative soul. And for card number three, we have, ah, these folks here. All right, so take a look and see which of these three cards is speaking to you today in terms of what is it that you are feeling enslaved by right now in your life and what can we do to free ourselves from that? So I'll put the timestamps down below for card one, two, and three, and then we'll pull out some Hebrews and see what those answers bring. See you in your reading. Hello, card number one, folks. Let's take a look at this card first off. So these soul cards, they don't have a fixed meaning. You get to determine what that means to you. But what I'm seeing in this card today is we have a winged being, perhaps a messenger of some sort, and they are breasted. They have possibly a shield over here on their arm, although it's an unusual looking shield. And in their other hand, they're carrying a flaming wand of some sort. It's hard to determine exactly what gender this being is, but they seem to have wings, possibly a shield, which would speak to protection, and a wand, which is both maybe power and also light coming toward you, perhaps leading the way to freedom. So we're going to take a look. We're going to set this off to the side here. Let that angel or whatever it is keep watch over here. And we're going to pull out a set of six to begin with Hebrew and today in the Shield of David spread. We'll go over what each position means, as well as what each letter means. Mm, okay. So, 
In the reading of the Shield of David spread, I start with the top letter, and the top letter in this case is the letter Chet. And the letter Chet, this is what uh, the position stands for, what is coming down from the divine right now? What is the message that we're getting from above? And the letter Chet is the letter that begins the word Chai, which means life. So our card here today, what is it that is, I'm going to try to slide that in the center in fact, what is it that is enslaving us right now? And maybe the answer is just life. Life is, life has got a hold on us. It's, it's, it's holding us down perhaps, or we're feeling held down by life. And Chet is also the first letter of the word Choshek, which means darkness. So there may be something dark, maybe something in our lives that is dark right now that is holding us down. And that's beautiful that we have this torch then lighting it up for us. The Chet is also the number eight in Gematria, which speaks to the infinite. So something that is ongoing, something that is continuing to happen over and over again, something having to do with light, life, something that having to do with darkness and something that's going on and on and on. And perhaps that's the thing that we're feeling enslaved by, this, these routines or these repeating patterns. Mm. The lower right uh, corner of our spread is the letter of what is known about our situation. We have the, the letter Zion. Zion is the letter that speaks to a sword or a scepter. It has to do with sovereignty personal sovereignty perhaps, power certainly, some kind of power. It is the number seven, so it speaks to a, a final uh, finality because of the seven days of creation. So something has come to an end. Something recently has come to an end for us. And maybe that's part of our challenge right now is that we have this, this cycle that has come to a close and we have to step into our own personal power about it right now is what I'm getting from this reading. Hmm. And then over here on the left lower corner we have the letter Nun. And Nun is the letter that stands for humility. It is the first letter of the word Ne'aman and you can see it sort of looks like a bent over humble person, somebody who's in service or maybe in slavery. Uh, this is what's unknown about our situation, that there's been some kind of enslavement. It's interesting that that's in the position of the unknown, since that's what we're actually speaking about today. But maybe we're being enslaved by something that we don't see, that these patterns that we're running into, or this completion, is feeling a little bit like we are being humbled by it. And maybe we need to step into that humility a little bit in order to find our freedom. It's the letter that, in my reading of the tarot cards as they correspond to the Hebrews, uh, stands for the Hermit card. So each of these letters in my book speaks to one of the tarot cards. And the Hermit is an interesting character because the Hermit, in fact, is one who has a torch or a lantern that is showing the way. They're humble and they're bent over and they're spending some time in solitude, but they're guiding the way forward. So it sounds like perhaps we've got this ongoing issue. There goes my chime, which says the divine is here with us. This ongoing issue that is maybe a little oppressive, the life, the darkness. Again, in my correspondences with the tarot cards, the Chet corresponds to the devil card. So it's about bondage. It's about being, being, feeling bound or having made some contracts or covenants that are, that are problematic. So we've got some bondage here. The letter Zayin is about power, stepping into one's own personal sovereignty. And so it corresponds in my reading to the emperor. So taking on, taking back your power. And then we have the Hermit here, which is possibly advice here. Be in your solitude for a moment. Step into your humility 
and understand that that's one of the ways that you can light up this torch and find your way out. On the bottom of our reading, we have the letter Lamed, and that is in the position of what's the root cause of our situation. Our Lamed is, is the letter that corresponds to heart. The word Lev, which means heart in Hebrew, starts with Lamed. It's about reaching up with aspiration. And it is the foundation of action. So maybe we've done something led by our heart, but it's brought us into this difficult time, this bondage. We've got the idea of hope and reaching up with hope. We have the letter Lamed, which also speaks to learning and teaching. And so about taking in information, absorbing it, deciding what is valuable and what we need to let go of. So we're learning something here. Whatever it is that we're stuck in, this slavery, this enslavement time, is a learning opportunity for us. Our challenge in the upper left corner is the letter Vav, and the letter Vav is the letter that means connection. And this is in the place of challenge in our reading, so we're being challenged with figuring out how to connect with another and maybe to connect with ourselves or the divine. It's like a tall, st straight standing person with a little bit of a bowed head. So again, a little bit more of that humility coming up here. But the Vav, because it is about connection, also corresponds to the lover's card in the tarot. So something about an exchange and some sort of deep connection that's going on. And you can be lovers with yourself. You can be, uh, lovers with the divine as well. And it's a little bit of a challenge right now, finding that connection piece, perhaps. And our vice for our situation is up here in the upper right corner, and what we have is the Ein Sof. It's the blank that speaks to the infinite. So going back to the infinity with the, the number eight and the letter Chet, but really lean into the unknowing right now, really lean into that primordial chaos that will bring us back to oneness. We've got this angel here, this winged being with a torch and a shield lighting the way to our freedom. I'm going to pull out one more letter. We get an outcome. And we have the letter pay. And the letter pay is the letter that is the mouth of the divine speaking creation into existence. So our outcome here is saying to us with this mouth that it's important to speak into the world what we'd like to see. It is the binary transformation of grace and ugliness. So we have a choice here. Where on that scale are we going to land between grace and ugliness? Can we, instead of complaining about what we don't have, instead of being entrapped by what we see as darkness, can we speak toward what we'd like to see? We'd like to see some more light, please. Can we reach into ourselves and imagine what we'd love to see in the world? Step into our sovereign power with humility. Try to connect with divinity. Reach up with heart. Lean into the infinite and speak into the world what we'd like to see in this coming time as we liberate ourselves from the slavery of the darkness, from the slavery of our own ideas, and really step into our power and speak forth what we'd like to see in the world. And when we do that, we'll find our freedom. So for those of you who chose card number one with the winged being, with the torch, this has been your reading today. I wish you a hug, Pesach Sameach. Have a very wonderful Passover. And ideally, we'll see you on the other side of the Red Sea. Shavuot Tov.
Hello, card number two, folks. This is the card that you've chosen for your reading today on the theme of what has us enslaved and what can we do to free ourselves. We have this character who's sitting precariously on the side of a mountain. It looks like a, a side of a hill near the water. It's kind of dark and storms overhead. They do have a halo around them, some kind of light is either surrounding their head or emanating from them, but they're in contemplation, uh, maybe reaching up and trying to ask of the sky, what what is happening here? And we have the sea, you know, which reminds me, of course, of the Red Sea that splits as we walk out of the narrow place. So let's get a little bit more clarity on what is it exactly that's enslaving us and what can we do to free ourselves here? I'm going to lay down all the um, letters and then we'll talk about them. down almost all the letters. Okay, so what we have here coming down from above, uh, the first letter at the very top is the letter Tav, and the letter Tav is the final letter of the alphabet. It is the stamp or the signature or the seal that is made by the divine once that alphabet has been completed. So it speaks to um, the idea of, of a finality that's happened. So this challenge, perhaps, that we're dealing with, this idea of slavery, is something's come to an end, a very final end, something that has, again, just been stamped or sealed with finality. It is the binary transformation of sovereignty and slavery. So that's perfect for this reading as, we, as we're looking at slavery and what are we enslaved by. But we need to just determine where are we on that continuum between our own personal sovereignty and feeling enslaved. And how can we shift that if we're feeling enslaved towards sovereignty again? Because it is the final letter of the Aleph Bet, it also speaks to sort of reincarnation. There is this concept that when things come to an end, they, nothing actually comes to an end. It just transforms into something new. It is the last letter of the word Emet, which comprises the first center and final letter of the Aleph Bet. So Emet, which means truth. So something, the final truth is coming to be seen. It also is a letter that is associated with judgment, the word Dean, which means judgment. So there's something, again, final here, some, some kind of final judgment that's happening. It corresponds to the moon in the sky, which is to say it rules over the moon in the sky. And here we're coming right into this full moon as we hit Passover. So we have this full moon over us right up, right up above, like the halo around the head of this character. And it's saying things are in their full in fullness right now. And something about that ending or that judgment is maybe put us into an enslaved position that we need to somehow transform ourselves from that slavery back into sovereignty. And in the lower right corner, we have the letter Resh. Resh, which means head, Rosh, like Rosh Hashanah, uh, the beginning of the year, Rosh Chodesh, beginning of a month. And right now we're at the beginning of the year. This month of Nisan is considered the first month of the year in, in one of the countings of the Hebrew calendar. So we have a beginning here, a new beginning. And this is what we know about our situation. It is the binary transformation of seed and barrenness. So there's something that's been planted, and we need to see whether it's actually going to produce fruit. And maybe that's part of our liberation here, is, is planting something new. Or recognizing that something new has been planted already for us. Whether we feel it or not, whether we're feeling free or not, something has started here. Something new is afoot. Or a head in this case, <laughs> because Rosh means head. 
I see the the letter Raish um, as being corresponding to the tower card in the traditional tarot because it is this mm, this idea of something new, but it also corresponds to something that has fallen apart. So something has ended, like I said, with the Tav, and now we have something new coming in. So there's been this destruction, very really sudden change, some kind of chaos that's happened. And now we have the opportunity to begin again. So the Resh is something that we know. Some seed is planted, something new is coming. And what is unseen in our situation is the letter Samech. Samech is that which surrounds. It is sovev, meaning being surrounded by. It's a circle. It's very much like the moon above. And it's about cycles. So the moon which goes in cycles, and here we again are at the full moon as we come into Pesach. But it's about being surrounded with protection as well. Just being surrounded with loved ones, maybe with family. Maybe even though we feel like we're alone on a hillside looking over the sea, we need to recognize that we are surrounded with love from the divine, from our family, from our community, from the world, from nature. So it's about cycles and circles and wheels and turnings and comfort and protection. So what we don't see now is that we are divinely protected, that we are surrounded, and that things will continue to move and transform, that cycles keep turning, nothing stays the same. So even though we may be sitting alone in despair up on this hillside, we need to know that all things change and that we're surrounded even when we feel alone. And that may be part of our transformation toward freedom as well, recognizing that we're never alone even when we feel that we are. What's coming up from the bottom is the letter Kaf, and it's a palm of a hand or the sole of a foot. And the letter Kaf is uh, the f letter that corresponds to power. It's the first letter of the word Keter, uh, meaning crown, and Koach, meaning power. So coming up from the root of our situation is that there is power here. There may have been oppression. It, it, it is also, it could be anything that happens with a hand. It could be something who is someone who's exchanging with you, giving you something, but it could be somebody else who is just oppressing or suppressing you. So it can be that kind of palm as well. So maybe there's some oppression coming up from beneath our root here. And if there is, we need to recognize that we have our own power. This corresponds in my book to the tarot card of strength. So we have personal power and we need to tap into that even if we're feeling oppressed. It is the letter that uh, represents the sun in the sky. So it's interesting we have the sun below and the moon above in this case. And I think that's like, it's like a little bit of a swap going on that maybe we are pressed by having everything turned upside down for us right now with this finality happening. The moon is above us and the sun is below us somehow. But it is power. It is, it is both oppression and our own power. And in exchange, giving and receiving. Giving what we need to give and receiving what we need to receive. Not being too proud to take help when we need it. In our upper left corner, we have the letter Nun, and Nun is about humility. And this is the position where there's a challenge here. How can we remain humble in this situation? And this corresponds in my book to the Hermit card in Tarot, and this card very much reminds me of that Hermit, sitting alone, contemplating, having the light shining around their head, maybe showing the way forward for others. But that humility... So that's the challenge right now, is how do we remain humble and, and pr present and waiting for what's coming next in the next iteration of the cycle. And our advice for the situation is the letter Yud. And Yud is that seed, it's that one smallest point, the first letter of the divine name, really calling in the seed planting that we have here from the Resh that, that uh, this is the very seed that we're talking about. 
How do we reach back to that one point that brings us everything together and helps us to understand that when a seed is planted, we have no power over it. We only get the opportunity to plant that seed and then we have to trust. We have to trust that that seed will grow if it is meant to grow. And we don't get to decide that. We still have to take the opportunity to plant the seed. Especially when things have come to an end, it's time to start again. It's time to start again. And that's what the Yud is about here. And I'm going to pull out one more letter to give our, our finality of our situation here. And the letter that's coming out is the, the letter Ayin. The letter Ayin is an I. So it's about being able to see your way forward and also about being watched over by the divine. And I love that in, in regards to this card, where this person is sitting there looking up, looking up to the sky, looking up to the divine, and we can trust that the divine is watching over us as well. It is the number 70 in Gamatria, so it speaks to another completion, another full completion, seven being the number of days of creation, and 10 times seven being an ultimate manifestation of something coming to a fina final conclusion. It's about being watched over, about having eyes to see, about vision forward. It is also about judgment. It is the tribe of Dan, which means judgment. So we've got the finality of the Tav here with the idea of judgment and the finality of the Ayin with the tribe of Dan, meaning judgment. So something uh, is coming to an end. Maybe this challenge, maybe this, uh, this enslavement that we're feeling is coming to an end. And this corresponds in my book to the tarot card of judgment as well, which is, again, both this idea of something coming to a completion, being, having been discerned about what is right and what is wrong, and then the rising, the, the, um, the cycle coming around again, the seed being planted, that there is this, this transformation that once things come to an end, they rise up again. There's something new that comes out of that. So we've got this completion twice here. We've got the seed twice here. We've got power. We've got protection, which is to say protection of uh, being surrounded and also protection because we're being watched over and humility, which is the challenge here. So if you have been feeling enslaved, something has come to an end. You have seeds here to plant. We need to be able to see our way forward, know that we're surrounded and protected even when we feel alone, sit in humility, understand that even if there's been oppression, it's time to reclaim your own power and see your way forward into the future. So for those of you who chose card number two, this has been your reading. Hag Pesach Sameach, have a wonderful Passover, and Shavua Tov, we'll see you here next time. Hello, card number three. This is the card that you've chosen today. And, you know, I love this in regards to Pesach. Um, and I say that because here we have the water. And there's so much about, about water in Passover. In this case, we have somebody on a boat. It looks like a, a person. Um, and, and then coming up out of the water is a female or at least a breasted figure who is reaching up and maybe flicking him with water. It's unclear what the emotions are. And she looks pretty serene under the water here. He looks a little bit confused or maybe agitated by whatever is happening below the sea here. But there's something to do with transitions over water or through water in this case. And I'm not sure what these cards mean. They're just for your own personal interpretation. But as we are moving on from uh, slavery into some sort of freedom here, through water, through a birth of sorts, this card seems really appropriate for this week. So let's pull out some Hebrews to see uh, what is up and how we can interpret this. I'm going to put down all the letters and then we'll read them. All right. 
right. So coming down from the top, we have the letter Chet. The letter Chet is the first letter of the word Chai, which means life. Also the first letter of the word Choshek, which means darkness. So we have this, they're not, they're not in contrast with each other. Life includes darkness and darkness includes life. And in fact, all of life is born from darkness on some level. So maybe that's where we're feeling a little enslaved. I see that Chet, there's our, there's our chime that reminds us that, that the divine is here with us right now. So we have the letter Chet and it speaks to contracts and covenants. It looks a little bit like a marriage canopy, a chuppah, which begins with the letter Chet and also represents the number eight, which speaks to the infinite, the, the infinity loop. Also, the eighth day of after a birth of a child is when they have either a naming and or a circumcision, which is considered a covenant with the divine. So we have life. We have darkness. Maybe that's feeling a little oppressive right now. Something that's going on in life which feels dark. Maybe that's the enslavement that we're feeling, that maybe we've made some contracts that we're unhappy about. But the thing about making contracts is that you can unmake them. You can release yourself from them. Chet uh, corresponds to the devil card in my reading of the tarot as it corresponds to the Hebrews. So the devil is all about having been enslaved by something, uh, but not realizing that you can get free at any time. You're not actually, in, you're not actually ensnared. You feel like you're chained up, but you can walk away at any time. So that's one of the messages that's coming here. What we know about our situation is there's some kind of connection. Vav is the letter that means connection. It is literally the word and in Hebrew. And it could be about connection with another person. Uh, the lovers um, is how I see this corresponding to the tarot. So there could be something with another person, but it can also be a connection with oneself or a connection with the divine. And it is about standing tall with a slightly bowed head in humility. So rooting oneself deep into the earth and reaching up high toward the connection to the light. That's what we know about our situation. That there's some kind of connection piece that is driving this. We've got the chuppah here and maybe the lovers here. Maybe that connection with another person, which has felt a little bit oppressive. Uh, and it's time to think about how, how can we free ourselves uh, at least in our hearts, toward liberation right now at this time. What's unseen in our situation is the letter Aleph. And the letter Aleph is the first letter It's the, of the Aleph bed. It is the number one. So maybe what we're not seeing here is the oneness of the situation. We have in the letter Aleph, we have the Yud above and the Yud below and the Vav right between, similar to what we've got going on here with the Vav. But... Um, but we have the divine involved here. So even though we're having issues maybe with connection with another person and or with feeling enslaved, we need to know that the divine is involved, whether we can see it or not. We've got the Vav, maybe we can't see those two Yuds knowing that the divine is watching over above and also connecting us, rooting us deep below. We have this idea of connection and division between the unity and the multiplicity of divinity. There is one God, but m infinite facets of God that we can't always uh, reconcile because it's a huge paradox for us, the oneness and the manyness of all things. And this is in the position of what we don't see here right now, so maybe it's time to really focus on that oneness that what we seem to think is a threat to us, maybe under the surface of things, is just playing. It's just a it's just a playful character who's given us a little splash. What we have down at the root cause of our situation is the letter Tav. And the letter Tav is the final letter of the Aleph Bet. So we have this idea of finality, of judgment. It is the moon in the sky. And we have the full moon coming up on Wednesday. So something about cycles and transformation. When things come to an end, something almost always begins again. So our root cause here is that something is coming to an end. Something is coming to an end. 
maybe the oppression that we're working with is coming to an end and things are shifting, that cycle is turning, the moon is becoming full and then it will start to wane again. So we need to keep that in mind, that even when things seem difficult or or untenable, there's, there will always be an end and a transformation and a new beginning. And our challenge in their situation up here in the left corner is the Ein Sof. The Ein Sof meaning that without end. And that we have this primordial chaos that is challenging for us. It's, it's a lot to contemplate the infinite. That it's, it's what we cannot comprehend. It's a real challenge right now. Also, once we come through the narrow place into freedom, there we are in the wilderness with nothing. We don't know what to do. We're, we have this blank slate and we have to start and we don't even know where to start because we've never been free before, perhaps. So that idea of the unknown is really a challenge right now as we cross the sea. And our advice in this situation is the letter pay. And the letter pay is the mouth of the divine speaking creation into existence. It's time for us to imagine what we'd like to see in the world and speak it into being. We get, to, we get to decide what we'd like to see and create it with our words, the same way that the divine created the universe using words. There's this mouth here. And the pay is the number 80 in Gamatria. It's so interesting because we have the number 8 here speaking to the infinite. We have the infinite here, the Ein Sof with nothing on it. And we have the 80, which is 10 times 8. So we have infinity, infinity, infinity all around. Uh, and... And, and they're in different positions, which is to say, what feels oppressive is something that's going on and on and on and infinite. What feels frightening is the unknown. And our advice here is to lean into that and speak into being what we'd like to see in the world with this idea that the infinite is protecting us and watching over us. We have the, the number one here, which is to remind us that all things are one. All things come from that primordial chaos, that there's connection between all things. All things come to an end and begin again. And I'm going to pull out one more Hebrew and as our final letter here tonight. And we have the letter Shin. I love that. So the letter Shin is the letter that means fire. It's the creation element of fire. And I love that on top of the water here. Because what does that happen? We have fire and water, we get steam. We get uh, energy, we get a, a combination of those beautiful elements coming together. The shin, which is made up of three yuds and four vavs here, which brings together the number seven, the three plus four, number seven, the number of days of creation. But the letter shin itself, is about fire. It's about transformation. It's about mm, the Shekhinah, the indwelling presence of the divine. It's about shalom, which is to say wholeness, not just peace, but wholeness. That that's our outcome here. Through all of this seeming oppression and slavery, when we become free, as we come through the water, as we come through the sea, we get to come out on dry land into that fiery place and to have our hearts on fire, to have, have the passion that we need to move forward. That we get to experience passion again and the presence, the indwelling presence of divinity. And I love that here because this, this woman under the water, this female character under the water reminds me of the Shekhinah or the El Shaddai. El Shaddai, which means the breasted one, one of the names of the divine. And so we have this seemingly oppressive or terrifying being under the water, this presence that's under the water playing with us. We don't know what to make of it. That we have maybe darkness, life, and contracts that we don't feel comfortable or feel, feel oppressed by right now. This connection piece that we know is, has, is both serving us and maybe time, maybe keeping us enslaved a bit. We need to remember that there is oneness in all things, that something is coming to an end. And when it does, something new will be born. But we have to 
endure the discomfort of the wilderness. We have to endure the discomfort of the unknown and speak into existence what we would like to see in the world now. Not complain about the things that we don't like, but to really imagine what we would like to see. And as we come through the water, we get to look up at the stars and the moon and the sun, lean into the wholeness, transformation through fire, and return to the presence. So for those of you who chose card three, <coughs> this has been your reading. Hag Pesach Sameach. Shavua Tov. See you here next time.